this market is growing extremely fast now and they need the products coming from Malaysia and most of the customers want to be supplied out of Malaysia. So this is a challenge for both for our supply chain. The first building we already equipped, 100% volume from the first plant we are utilizing now. And uh, we are thinking about starting in the second stage of our investment. Give us, uh, in terms of um, dollar and cents, how much has been invested in Malaysia so far and how much will be pumping in within the next year or so as you ramp up your production? We already invested a little bit more than 1.2 billion euros so far. We have another commitment of round about 500 million euros. Part of it actually is implemented now and uh, the remaining part of these 500 is part of our investment plan for the closer near upcoming future. We are profitable now on the EBIT side so we have a lot of cash flow positively to further invest into Kulin and other high-end sites but Kulin definitely is a center for upcoming investments. Do you foresee a talent gap in Malaysia? Do you foresee problem uh, staffing because of a shortage of skill workers. This is more and more uh, definitely an issue. We have 2,100 employees here in Malaysia and uh, roughly one quarter of it is uh, high skill jobs. So white color jobs, jobs in the technical environment, TDI, technical support and development. Definitely for Malaysia is if you want to formally grow in high tech area, please take care for higher education as well. And it starts very early in school so that kids are interested for technology, for mathematics, for engineering. And of course you need high class universities as well. Uh, most probably relatively close to these investment hotspots. Will ATNS be able to maintain its double digit growth going forward? And where are the major drivers for growth for ATNS? The strongest growth is what we see with products which are manufactured also here. So with the substrates for the supercomputers. This growth is beyond 20% year over year. We expect this kind of growth to be continued. So our expectation for the next fiscal year will be in the range of 2.1 up to 2.4 billion euros. But what keeps you up at night? It is definitely the uncertainty of the US foreign politics and the US trade politics. It's not that much the terrorists because we are not delivering directly to the United States, so our customers mostly further integrate uh, their products somewhere in Asia, not in the US. So uh, this uh, tariff war is, is uh, something what is not really affecting us. It's the uncertainty where products should be produced and where to further invest. How do you navigate all these challenges amid the uh, superpower rivalries? If the uh, geopolitical uncertainty were to escalate. What are the measures that you can use, ATNS will be employing to adapt to the situation, to remain resilient? We are in a pretty good situation that we can react quite quickly if necessary for further demand out of a country like Malaysia, what is still highly accepted. But we also have uh, the subsidiary in Austria for certain products. Additionally, we are we already have started a China for China strategy. So we um, set up a dedicated sales team, a ted dedicated technology team, and uh, already um, gather customer in China. How long do you take before China catches up in terms of technology? I think for, for mainstream and volume technology, this will not take so long. Maybe it takes a longer time for the absolute high-end supercomputing and the absolute high-end uh, artificial intelligence.